but I also feel like as far as this matchup is concerned, he's going to be able to stay more mobile as Palutena because she's going to be in the air a bit more. Now, mind you, Peach covers the air very well, but a lot of her game is bringing the combos from the ground to the air. She doesn't have too much that just stays air to air, and then trying to catch landings, it's a bit difficult Ooh. when both characters are in the air. Right there, we're kind of seeing the range that Palutena can have against uh, Peach in the air. That back air has been so good. The forward air, too, is so quick. It has a nice range on it. See how Ling Ling kind of adapts and fights against this range. You can see Odyssey weaving around Ling Ling in the air, but there you go, getting the combo started on the ground. This is what you're talking about, Hangman. When it comes to damage being on the board, these percentages are almost a non-factor because you're going to see both of these players building up so much damage so quickly. Where a lot of the damage is going to really come down to is once we start to climb to the higher percentages, who's going to confirm their kill better? Because we know these guys are going to be able to pack a punch with their combos. It's all going to be a matter about how well they evade the offensive when it comes time to kill. That's right. Just like you said, I mean, the damage initially, it looked like Odyssey was out to a really strong start, but Ling Ling and Peach can just bring them back in their favor. And like that, where it's 96 apiece. And Ling Ling, though, has Adi at the ledge. Let's see. Nice, good punish by Adi. He's going to throw Ling Ling off. See if he can find a KO here. Looking for the explosive play and can't find it. I feel like that move was so, so, so strong when the game first came out. It's still really strong, but I think people are learning to adapt and look for it, have the eye for it, as Ling Ling showed there. Yeah, the move itself has a very small towel with the spark and light. There you go. Never mind. You're Sneaking not that one in there. Yeah, so, yeah. You so. gotta be. You always have to be looking for it. Always kind of have to keep your eye on her. But if you're just oh, never. Ling Ling firing back. <laughs> Up smash taking that one. Dead even. Game right now, Hangman. When you take into consideration the two players that are on board, regardless of the characters they're piloting, it's going to be a mile a minute kind of battle. They're comboing fast, they're killing fast. Stage control is going to be swapping from both sides back and forth as we got a really fun match ahead of us. Yeah, for sure. And it kind of comes down a lot to, like, if they overcommit or if they make a mistake, they respect the other player and their character so much. Like, I know if I whiff something... Hold on. Fling at the ledge, see what he can find. Nothing. Okay, he gets out of there. But they respect each other so much. Like, you just have to space so well against the other character. You're going to be eating either a ton of damage or put yourself in a bad position, like, on the ledge. And Odyssey cannot find his way off. Ling Ling doing a great job uh, pressing his advantage there. But another explosive flame from Odyssey. It's going to be a good tool for him in this matchup, it looks like, Hangman. I feel like a lot of what we're going to be seeing is these players trying to use their low committal options to force a reaction. So on the side of Odyssey, you're going to see a lot of explosive flame. We're going to see a lot more neutral air. Just something that's going to occupy a lot of space or some sort of movement reaction. And on the side of Ling Ling, he's going to have turn up in hand. We're going to see him be able to do dare and neutral air just with the purpose of forcing Adi out of his positioning. He's going to be able to scoop super well. But when he's trying to recover with Parasol, it's much more difficult. Now Ling Ling yeah. sits on his last stock. Yeah, and you know, that was amazing patience by Odyssey at the ledge. Ate up Ling Ling's jump and waited out the parasol. He knew he wanted the back air. That was going to be his option. And he waited for Ling Ling to kind of spend all of his options. And he had to float towards the ledge at some point. Odyssey just called him out. Here we go. Nair is coming out from Odyssey. And he has the platform right there going for the back air to end that one off. 40% already on Ling Ling. And he still hasn't found the stock yet. The back air was a bit of an interesting option because normally we see neutral air to either finish off the chain or forward air for a bit more confident. But... Being as the back air was the option, I'm curious to see if Adi was just trying to see if Ling is going to go for some sort of a countermeasure, be it back air or neutral air of his own. Ling Ling, and that's going to be stock. Good job by Ling Ling. I like how he, he protected the ledge anyway, just in case, respecting Odyssey and Palutena's recovery, but Ling Ling going to have to find himself off the ledge. Looks like, ooh, okay, the rage on that Fin jab finisher. Hold on. I did not expect the jab to be able to catch out the Peach Bomber because of it. Odyssey sitting very comfortably with control of the ledge. However, missing the back air is going to give Ling Ling a chance to return to the stage. Yeah, Odyssey two for three now on those back airs, catching Ling Ling out of his up B. But again, Ling Ling, he just can't find his way out of the disadvantage still. Off the stage and see what he can find. He's in the hot shot, back, back and forth, but Odyssey just scoops him out of the air. Adi is not afraid to challenge any of these motions. As soon as he has control of the ledge, he is making sure that Ling pays the price to come back on stage. If it's not a stock, it's going to be a whole lot of percentage. Okay, look, definitely looking for the KO. You can't get too antsy here because Ling Ling, he's a veteran player. Not that Odyssey isn't. You know, Odyssey's still kind of a young gun, though, in my in my books. You know what I'm saying? So, oh, the parry. I, is that the first parry we've seen this game, actually? At least for this game, yes. I think so, yeah. So, that's just showing, like, Ling Ling... I feel like pairing, I was thinking it on the car right over here. It is just such a message of like, oh, explosive flame? That's it. That's it. That's what we were talking about that move. If you aren't paying attention for it, you don't have the eye for it, it's going to catch you. And honestly, you got two KOs off that explosive flame. Is she just laughing in your face after she beats you? 
Is yeah. that what happens? She just giggles in her face? Yeah, That's both, so rude. Th these characters are so stylish when they went. Both of them have amazing windscreens. Interesting enough, it looked like Ling had started to throw out the back air, but it didn't even clank or do anything with the explosive flame. Just really a force to be reckoned with, so you really have to have the eye for it, as we talked about earlier, Hangman. The explosive flame is counted as an intangible projectile, so it's not mm. something that can be interacted with. Right. It's very similar to Zelda's, Zelda's Din's Fire, which... <laughs> if you really think about it, Explosive Flame is just that on, like, 10 but like, scale. But, like, a thousand times better, at least. Like, it's just so good. So, But, I mean, I, Dead Spire has gotten slowly better throughout the games, and I think we're seeing the best form of it. But in either case, no Zelda on the screen here. Uh, you got a different princess and a goddess on the screen. It's going to be game two. Ling Ling saying, hey, man, let's take it back. Uh, Pokemon Stadium 2 is good for the starter. And bring one, it out for the second course, too. One thing I want to bring up that you had mentioned right at the end of game one was parrying. We had saw a parry and an action right out of it. And that's almost been like the note of this tournament is, yes, you can get a parry. You can time it right if you know what the attack is. But it's much more important to know what your response is at a parry. Right. And that's something that we, we've been seeing slowly as the bracket goes on is that these players are knowing when's the right time to parry and like what's the right action out of it. What are they going to be able to get the most out of yeah, and that second step is so important because people eventually, like, the meta's going to get so far into parrying is that people will be baiting out parries using multi-hit moves and things that you can't punish afterwards or trying to parry, see what you want to do, and then bait it out and punish whatever you're going to do after the fact. So, I mean, it's going to get so meta and so next level, but... I feel like... Yeah. It's indicative of the fact that defensive options aren't as strong in this game, so, like, you really have to weigh out, like, is it worth it to go on the defensive? Like, am I going to get enough payoff out of this? Or, and a lot of what we're seeing in this particular set, all these guys just clashing at each other, go on the offensive, who's going to build up the better offensive, control of the stage, have their tools at the ready, and instead of going on the offensive, just completely, like, overwhelm their opponent instead of trying to turn a reversal. All right. Odyssey fighting his way out of the corner. I like that. I do not like the forward smash, though. Ling unable to punish it, but he still forces Odyssey into the ledge. See what he can find here. Good. Uh, okay. Good patience by Ling. Catching the, the lag after that air dodge. <laughs> Parry. Throw. Okay. Too okay. far for auto reticle to proc. Okay. Wow. Okay. Odyssey, I love it because the first game he was really only going for back air offstage. He mixed it up, changed up the tempo, sped it up, and Ling Ling couldn't catch up to that forward air, and he, he paid for it with a stock. I love how late hit of Nair is able to link itself into Nair. Do you love so, that? Like, I hate that. <laughs> <laughs> it's so... So I haven't had the displeasure of fighting a pilot Oh, uh, well. <laughs> but, let me tell you, dude. <laughs> it takes forever for that to go up. Oh, nice. Do a job by Ling Ling catching the teleport on the way up. Very nice stuff. Ling Ling recognizing when Palutena was vulnerable uh, on her way up to recover there. And Ling Ling, you know, he brought it back in terms of stocks, but I like the way Odyssey is playing with his lead right now. He gave up the stage positioning, did the little projectile warfare, got a grab, and now he's pushing the advantage even more. He's just finding these opportunities where the stray hits will lead into the strings, and if they don't, it's just going to get him so much stage control. He's forcing Ling into these really uncomfortable positions, whether or not he's coming back off the ledge or he's high off the platforms. Ooh, reset. That is so much that damage works. right there. That was nice. Yeah, dude, that was a really good eye by Ling Ling. He, he identified that combo immediately, and look at this. He's just taking off with this percentage. He is just doing such a good job on his offense right now. Ling Ling with all the answers everywhere. That's terrifying, and it just goes to show how observant of a player that Ling Ling is. He's very soft-spoken as an individual, yes. but when it's, he's on the sticks, this man is roaring at he, anyone He lets a controller do the talking for him, you know what I'm saying? That's Ling Ling 100%. Odyssey, I feel like he's looking for an up smash here. You can see the way he's, he's looking for some KO option. It looks like the explosive plane, but Ling Ling able to find the KO option first. Forward air. Ling Ling, what an answer. That second stock was beautiful by Ling Ling. Took the first stock, and then he was able to take the second as well. Very nice. And it seemed like game two was completely in Odyssey's favor. The way that he was able to win out most of the trades, control most of the stage. A lot of the ledge interactions were on Odyssey's favor. And all of a sudden, Ling Ling's excellent play, really good decision making, has brought him into control, but he's going to be losing a stock without putting any percentage on, leaving us at a dead even for the final stocks. Hey man, what doesn't that neutral air do? KOs, combos, uh, multi hit. Can uh, you tell me? I, I can't team with it in doubles. I think you could. I think that if you had a Palutena that just neutral aired, you'd do pretty good in doubles. But anyway, <laughs> Ling Ling trying to fight his way back into this game. He does have a little bit of a deficit here. He's got the dot. Oh, that wasn't the uh, dot. Nonetheless, keeping turn up in hand in this matchup, I feel, is really important because we've seen it a couple of times today uh, exclusively from Ling Ling. Ooh, but turn up is devastating at the ledge. It gives another option, and we start to see one of the flaws in Palutena's kit is that, like, she can't put out every aerial at once. She's got to commit to which one she leads in. And yes, neutral air is really, really good. Ooh, okay. Oh, Not enough power on that okay. F-tilt. Yep. 
Don't hold on. Ling Ling has to... Oh, he can uh. the from there. Odyssey oh. dropping a little taunt too. You know what, though? We're at Xeno, so it's two. It's best two out of three. Uh, all the way to winners' finals, right? Winners and grands? Yep. And winners, losers, losers or no? Winners, losers, grands. Great. Okay. All the fi all the big finals, really. So, great job. I mean, Odyssey taking that one down. I mean, first game, neck and neck kind of came right down to the last hit. This one, a little more in Odyssey's favor. 100% between the two players as he closed out the last stock. Dropping a taunt, feeling himself, and moving on. Punches, punches ticket for himself to winners' finals against Sinji. Yeah, that